Hey everyone, this is Kathy from Kdale Handmade and I wanted to welcome you to my tutorial today for the Juno Clutch Wallet. This is a wallet by Sonar Sewing Patterns and I just wanted to spend, send a special shout out over to Nicole at Sonar and say thank you so so much for allowing us to uh, use your pattern in our sewing marathon for today. And if you are new to um, this series, we are doing a Marathon Society sewing series where we sew up different patterns and show different ways to make things um, from various designers in the industry. So I'm super excited to show you my version of the Juno Wallet today. And let me just show you, here's one that I made from the pattern. It's super cute. It's designed for, um, Nicole does all of her stuff with cork. So, it is awesome. If you haven't checked her out, go check it out. It's sonar.co and I will link that into the notes so that you can check her out later if you haven't already, but she's super awesome. So here's the wallet. you got two slots here. You've got 16 card slots. 16. <laughs> that is a ton. Um, and then it just folds up. You've got on the back, you've got the zipper pocket and then the snap closure at the top. Now, as you can tell, this is a pretty significant, there we go. Um, it's kind of thick um, because there are 16 card slots, there's a bunch packed into this design. So I uh, personally don't use that many cards. I had my wallet stolen once when I was in Chicago um, for a long weekend. And ever since then, I try to carry the bare minimum. So while this is an awesome design and I love it, I would never use 16 card slots. So today I'm going to show you how to make the Juno wallet with just four card slots. Okay, so I think that's it. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, let's go over our pieces first and then we'll get started putting it together. All right, so this is a raw edge pattern. Um, it's designed for raw edge materials such as vinyl or cork, and I'm going to be using cork today. So I will show you the pieces I'm going to be using. This is um, the main panel, and you're going to need one cut in your exterior and one in your lining. And I am doing the same um, print for both of those pieces. Then you will also have a card panel back you can probably see I've marked lines in there. I'll tell you about that and how I modified that in just a second. You're going to need your card panel B slot or B piece. And then you have card panel A. And so for card panel A, how I've modified that is I have added one half of an inch to the pattern piece. And I've added it, I've added a half an inch to the bottom and then I've aligned the pattern piece on the bottom and cut the angle. As you can see, there's a little angle on there. I cut the angle with the pattern piece aligned on the bottom. So this piece up here is a little larger than usual. Um, but that's what I did for to modify these pattern piece A's. Um, I guess I should also tell you that for this piece, the um, center back, um, Actually, this is card panel B, but <laughs> um, this is going to go on the center back. For card panel B, I have increased it by half, a half of an inch this way and this way. So it is one inch longer um, all around. Well, one inch longer this way. All the measurements are the same, still going this way. So added an inch height here. Add a half an inch to the top of each piece here. Then you have your card slots. In the pattern, it calls for cutting six card slots. I am only cutting two, and I'm using this accent piece. And then I also increased this. Um, these ones I only increased by a quarter of an inch, and I increased it again with the pattern piece aligned at the bottom to cut the angle. And then, let's see if you can see this a little better here. And then on the top, I used this little scoop design. So there's several scoop, there's several designs for how you can, um, you know, do little accents here on the front. You could, I think there's one that has like a V shape. There's this one you could just do straight across. There's several options that you can choose from. I'm using the scoop version. And again, I 
increased it by a quarter of an inch here on the bottom, aligned the pattern piece on the bottom to cut the angles, aligned the pattern piece on the top to mark and cut the shapes for the card slots. So hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> There's two of those. Um, you will also need a zipper gusset. I have one of those. You will have your um, zipper pocket lining pieces. So I have both of those. In the instructions, Nicole says to, let's see, on this piece here, to align it so you have the gap on the top and the left. So when you're applying your interfacing, just make sure you have that space on the top and the left, um, and that will help with the installation of the zipper pocket later on. Okay, you will also have a zipper. The measurement is provided in the pattern. You will need two snaps, and I'm using these Fashion Spring snaps. If I can flip it over here, just a black snap there. Um, so you have two complete sets of those. You will also have some extra firm stabilizer. There are three different pieces, different measurements for each, and that is provided for in the pattern instructions. These are made out of Peltex um, for this part. And I think that's it. You might also want to grab, well, you will want to grab some clips, some double-sided tape, and yeah, that should be it. All right, let's go ahead and get started, guys. All right, so before we get putting this baby together, there are some uh, prep pieces, uh, prep work, prep steps. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> There's some prep work that we need to do, okay? So with our exterior pieces, there is, the pattern has um, template marks where, where you're going to make the snap placement marks at the top and the bottom. So this is on your exterior piece. And then this is going to be your zipper pocket where your coin slot is going to be, your, your coin zipper pocket. On the front of the interior piece, you're going to mark the four snap placements. On your center card panel back, you're going to mark the center, the marks on the front of this piece. So I will show you, um, just so you can see, what I did here, what I did differently to get my card placements. So this is the center line, and that is provided in the pattern instruction, and it's basically just the center between here and here. So that's the center line. Your, this top line and this very bottom line is going to be the center line in your pattern piece. So there, because there are so many card slots, there's like a line, a line, and a line. So this line is that center of those three lines. Um, hopefully that makes sense. And then what I did was I went from the center line up five eighths of an inch. So it is lower than this line. And this line for this version means nothing. I'm only showing it to you for reference. So you know kind of where things are laying. So from the center line, I measured up five eighths of an inch, I measured down five eighths of an inch, drew a line, and then that's where I'm going to be um, uh, placing my card slots. Okay, and then on the back of your um, cards, card, what's this called? Card panel B. So this is one where I increased it by one inch. So it's one half inch here, one half inch here. On the back, I drew the center line, and then I drew the curved lines according to the card slot design that I chose. So this is the curved lines here. And again, I, as I already mentioned earlier, when you put the interfacing on here, make sure you have the space to the left and to the top for the lining pocket. And all right, I think that is it. So I'm going to take these and set these to the side. I'm just going to cut out these little curves here. Okay, so once I got those cut, that's how that piece is looking. And then I'm just going to use my, I'm gonna put this to the side with my other pieces, my other card slot pieces. 
And then on this one, this is the lining where I marked those dots. I'm going to use my Japanese hole punch and just punch those holes. Okay, same for this side. All right, and then I'm going to use my rotary cutter as soon as I can find it. <laughs> and I'm going to cut out this uh, center box here. So I'm just going to use my rotary cutter and cut as close as I can get to that end, the side of the cards or of the box. And then I'm going to go in with my scissors and I'm going to snip up to the end of that line. And then just cutting straight across there. Do the same thing on the other side just to cut, finish cutting the box out. Okay, then the last thing you need to do is just cut down. I'm going to use my rotary cutter for this one. But you just want to cut down from the side of the box down to where the line is marked. Okay. I can cut mine a little bit further. So with the scissors, I'm just going to cut, snip right to the bottom of that line. Okay, so there is our exterior piece all prepped and we are ready to start putting it together. All right, so the first thing we're gonna work on is creating our card slot panel. So you will need your um, card panel A, and your, which are these two pieces here, and then the top of your card panel back. And we're going to take these and line them up, the straight long edges with the top back of that. Okay, so, um, let me grab my glue really quick. You don't have to use glue if you don't want to. Um, I am just going to use some, this is just fabric tack and I'm going to use it to hold it in place. Fabric tack works really well with cork. It dries pretty quickly and it's not a pain to sew through either. <laughs> All right, so this one is just going to be kind of our, our base, our starter pocket so we're just going to just gonna put some glue on there to help hold it in place lining it up with the top and pressing that down and then I'm going to do the same thing for the bottom so again you want your top straight edge to line up and where you cut the angle that's going to be towards the center of your card slot panel. Okay, it's just like that. We have it lined up at the top and the edge here and our slit, our slants, slits, slants <laughs> are towards the center here. Okay, now taking your next card slot and with it right side up i'm going to align it on that line that i drew here that was five eighths inch up from the center line i'm going to clip that in place along the side all right and then i'm going to do the same thing on the other side so aligning this card slot so you want to make sure as you're doing this, if you cut designs in yours, that it's towards the outside, always the angled piece is towards the center. Okay, so now I'm going to clip this one in place. All 
All right, and now that those are clipped in place, I'm going to go to the machine and I'm going to just sew down this bottom edge right here, um, attaching these card slots to this whole main panel here. Okay, so once you have that sewn down, you're just gonna sew along the bottom edge at 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. And if you were making the original with the additional card slots, you would just complete that step for each layer of card slots that you create. Um, since I'm only doing four card slots, this is all I need to do. So the next piece we're going to grab is our center piece here. And this is the one that we marked the midline on. And what we wanna do is align, match up those center midline marks at the side. I'm going to add a little clip there. And then and this is a little bit wider. So as you can see on the back here, it's a little bit wider, but that's okay. I'm going to trim it up before I do the final step, but this is just to hold it in place right now. Okay, once you get these clipped on, you're going to find the center point. So find the center point here, and you're going to stitch down from your top, so not all the way from the top edge, but just from your first card slot, you're going to stitch down the center to this end. So starting and stopping here and here, you might want to do a couple back stitches at each card slot just to give it, you know, strength where the, the stress points are going to be. Um, but yeah, so once you're, you have this all lined up, we're just going to stitch, find the center, stitch down the center from here to here. Okay, once you have that center line stitched down here, we are ready to set this to the side and we're going to move on to the lining. One note I will make about this panel is that when you are originally right marking your pieces, the instructions tell you to mark it on the back of this. Um, I did it on the right side uh, because for whatever reason I had it in my brain that it was gonna be dark on the back like it is on this this gray the backing is dark but whereas on the teal it's light so in my head I had it as well to be able to show you guys well enough I need to mark it on the front so that you can see um, but then of course with it being light on the back I, <laughs> I actually should have and could have written it uh, marked all the lines on the back and then that way this is going to be your card slot so this would have been the cork side, not the fabric side. Now this is a fabric side, it's it's the inside of the pocket and I don't really care, like for me that's not a big deal, but um, that's just a side note. I wanna make sure you guys are aware of that. So if you are um, following the instructions, you will mark the placement lines on the back side of this, not on the front side. But this is just for demo purposes, so that's the way I did it. Okay, so the next piece we're going to be working on is the lining, and I punched the holes in the lining piece. Um, I didn't need to do that just yet. It's not a big deal if you did, because we're gonna end up punching them again anyway. Um, but just as a side note, that's what I did. So we're going to also need our three pieces of extra firm stabilizer, and we are going to attach these to our lining. Now, if you have directional fabric, this is the lining side. So my flowers kind of go this way, so I wanna make sure this is the top. So I'm going to attach my piece of firm stabilizer. I'm gonna use my glue again for this. And there is a measurement in the pattern instructions that tells you exactly how far down to put it. I'm gonna use my ruler just to make sure it's straight. I'm not going to say the measurements, even though you might be able to see them if you look close enough. Um, but hopefully, we'll just use the um, instructions for those measurements. 
Okay, now you have two pieces. One is a little bit larger than the other. Um, so as you can see, it's just slightly larger. The larger piece is going to go in the middle and then the smaller piece is going to go down at this side. So I will, um, I'm going to measure these two pieces off camera to make sure they're in the right spot and glue them down and then I'll show you the next step. Okay, so once you have your pieces installed, your firm stabilizer pieces, your wallet's going to go this way and I'm going to set this to the side. If you are using magnetic snaps, you will install those now. I'm not, I'm using spring snaps and so those will be installed in the final construction. So actually it will go this way because this is your lining. Um, but anyways, that is what we're going to be doing there. So um, this part for me is complete for right now and we're ready to move on to the zipper pocket. All right, so now we're going to be working on the zipper box construction. So the pieces we're going to need is the zipper, this little zipper gusset piece, obviously your two pocket linings, and then your exterior piece. So the first thing we're gonna do is on the zipper pocket piece that has the interfacing that is smaller, we are going to take a piece of double-sided tape and we're going to attach it down this left side only. Okay, and then removing that paper backing, we're then going to fold this piece over using the interfacing as a guide. Okay, so it's gonna look like this. Then we're gonna set this piece to the side for now. Okay, so using your zipper, with the pull to the left when closed, so right now it's um, over here towards the right, so an easy way to figure that is the flat edge here will be the closed end, and then the rounded edge is the open and closed part. So on this side, on the bottom left only, we're going to measure in, and that mark is going to be at I believe it's going to be at three quarters of an inch, but let me just double check here real quick. Uh, yes, so three quarters of an inch in from the bottom left side only. You're gonna make a little mark. So there, and then at this part, or at this mark is where you want to make a 90 degree fold. So you can fold it down on itself and then fold it back. You can, um, if you have a method that you prefer, where I like to just kind of do mine all at once. And then I have a mini stapler that you all know is my favorite if you followed on any of my videos. It's a Tim Holtz mini stapler. And so I'll just put a little staple right there in the end. Optionally, you also could use a lighter and just singe that corner point right there and then kind of smoosh it together just be careful because it's melting the, the zipper tape and that can be really hot <laughs> so just be careful if you do it that way so that's what you want only a 90 degree corner on one piece only okay so this is now our exterior panel we're going to take it and lay it right sides down and we're going to place some double-sided tape along the top the side and then down the bottom, stopping where the slit is here. So we're only doing the top left and bottom. Okay, and my paper overlays a little bit because when I tear it off, some of it comes out. So as you can see, like here, there's no, let me just zoom in here. There's no um, sticky tape in this part right here. The tape starts right there at the line where I want it to. And that's just how it, it tears off sometimes. It's a little bit extra on the bottom, and, but it's the same here. There's no sticky underneath here, so I'm not going all the way over. So just to make that point of clarification, I didn't want you to think that I was putting the tape all the way over the slit. Okay, so now you're gonna take your zipper tape 
and you're going to align it over the center. So what you want is you want this folded edge here to be about an eighth of an inch away from the edge here. And you're going to align this in the center. So I might have to do a little adjusting and it looks like I need to because I want the zipper teeth right in the center of the hole, but I want that left side to be, like I said, about an eighth of an inch away. So if you need to, you can always adjust, since we're using double-sided tape, it is repositionable. So just kind of work it until you get your zipper right in the middle there. Mine is a little too close on the bottom, so I'm going to play with this to get it adjusted just right. Okay. All right, so that looks pretty good. As you can see on the bottom edge here, it's about an eighth of an inch away from the edge of this pocket here. Everything is centered. And that's what it looks like on the back. Now what we want to do is laying it wrong side up. So we're looking at the back of the zipper tape. Okay, so now we need to attach the zipper lining pieces, the, the fabric pieces. So we're going to take a piece of double-sided tape and lay it just along the bottom edge of the zipper here. Okay, remove the paper backing. And then with your piece of lining that we worked on earlier, the folded edge will be now on the right side with the other raw edge where there is no interfacing that will be facing towards the bottom. We're going to line this up right along the bottom side of that tape. And you want to, I need to move mine over a little bit. You want to line up this folded edge with this edge of your, the slit that you made in your fabric. So as you can see here, uh, you want this to line up just with this edge right here. Okay, once you have that in place, we're gonna flip it over, take it to the sewing machine, and we're going to top stitch just along this bottom edge. So I will start right here at this end right where the, the pocket gusset will be. I'm going to stitch all the way across to this end over here. And I might do a stitch or two past because I'm gonna end up making a box. So I wanna make sure it goes, you know, just far enough there. Maybe, a, a, like I said, a stitch past that end line right there. All right, so I stitched right across the bottom there. I will say that at this end here, I actually started from this end and sewed down to this end. In this side, I added, or I left a long string, and then I pulled it through to the back to tie it off. You can do that for both pieces if you want. I opted to back stitch this side a couple times, just because it was going over the zipper and it was connecting the exterior here with the lining. I just wanted to have a couple extra stitches to make sure it was nice and secure. Okay, now the next thing we do is we just fold this down and it should easily want to fold down because we have the interfacing there as our guide. Okay, so we're just gonna fold this down like this. Okay, so with our pocket down this way, now we need to grab our zipper gusset and on the back side along the short edge, we're gonna add a piece of double-sided tape. Okay, removing that paper backing. We're then going to flip it over so it is right sides up. And we are going to line up this short edge here with the top edge of the outer, that corner right there, and then also along this short edge right here. So it should be, it should line up perfectly with this corner right here. Now we're going to flip it over and just along this edge only, 
we're going to st top stitch that at 1 8 of an inch. All right, so I top stitched there from that corner down here, and I did again about another like one stitch past where this slit line ends because we are going to be making a box around the whole thing or to make it look like a box around the whole thing. So now that your zipper gusset is connected, the last thing that we need, well, not the last thing, but the next thing we need to do is apply a piece of double-sided tape along the tall edge. So here along this side, and then we're going to remove the paper backing And we're going to fold this over on itself and we want this to overlap the cut line by about a quarter of an inch. So as you can see there, it's folded in on itself and it overlaps the cut line. There is some zipper tape that hangs off, but we're not going to worry about that just yet. Take our double-sided tape. This time we are going to lay it down along the top edge of our zipper remove the paper backing and then taking our lining panel we are going to lay that along the top edge here actually I'm going to move mine up a little bit So I'm aligning the bottom edge of my pockets together, which means the top will overhang the zipper teeth or the zipper tape by a little bit, but that's because I want my bottom edges here to line up correctly. Okay, so before we stitch all of that on and finish our zipper box, what we need to do is close up our pocket. So that double-sided tape will hold that on there for this next step. What you wanna do is you wanna flip your panel over so it is right sides up, and we're going to flip the side back, sew down this side, turn, and then sew down this side, closing up our pocket. Okay, so the bottom and then this side is sewn and I just double stitched or not double stitched. I, I back stitched on this on the lining and then let me just cut off the extra threads here. So that will close up the right side of your pocket and the bottom because the left side is going to be where the gusset is. And now we need to finish sewing around this zipper box. So I don't know if you can see because my thread kind of blends. But down here, where we stopped, we are going to pick it up right here, stitch over to here, stitch up the side, stitch all the way across the top, and then stitch down to where we started our very first line. So basically we're creating, it, it makes it look like there's a box around the whole thing. Okay, so again, on this open side, we're gonna start down here, across, up, across, and down. Okay, now that that is stitched all the way around, you can check your zipper. There's your pocket. There's your little gusset. Everything is secure and sealed, so that is perfect. Everything is going well. <laughs> That's what we want. Now what we want to do is install the uh, male portion of the snap, or I think as Nicole likes to call it, the sombrero and the top hat. <laughs> So that is these two pieces. So there's one, as you can see, one sticks up a little bit higher than the other. I would say sombrero and top hat. So that is what we're going to install on this side over here. And I'm going to use a piece of Peltex just because, actually I think I'm gonna cut this one in half just to make it a small piece, but I just want to give it a little bit extra uh, stabilizer since it's going to be a stress point on the wallet. I just want to make sure that it's not too stressful for that little snap. Okay, so placing the taller piece 
through. Here, I'm gonna flip it this way. Just personal preference. This is the bumpy side, and for whatever reason, I want the smooth side. I want the bumpy side down. Even though it doesn't matter, I just like how it feels better with that with it that way. So that's just personal preference. Okay, and then we're going to put the little other piece on here. Set that. I'm going to do that, and I'll set the other one as well, and then I'll be back to show the next. Okay, those two snaps are set. The last thing we need to do is on this side, if you have any extra, uh, let's see, where are my scissors? If you have any extra um, zipper tape that overhangs here, you can trim that off. The same thing for this side. If you have a little here you want to trim off, that will just to help help to um, reduce the bulk as we're sewing these sides together. I feel like mine are in far enough that um, I think it'll be just fine. Also, um, I can't find my scissors right now, so <laughs> that's what it's going to be. Okay. Okay, so we're going to take our exterior and then our lining, and that is the piece that has the Peltex Firm Stabilizer on it. So this is going to be the top because we installed the snaps at the bottom. And we know this is the top because it has the small um, piece of Decoville here. Now what we want to do is we want to attach these two pieces together, wrong sides together. So I'm going to use a little bit of glue. And you can use glue or double-sided tape, whatever works best for you. I'm just going to try to spread the glue all around, avoiding my pocket. I think it doesn't really matter here because it's gonna be on the inside, but I'm just going to avoid it anyway. All right, once I get a good amount of glue around there, not too much, I don't want it to be too bulky, but just spread around pretty evenly. I'm going to take, put that lid back on the glue. And now I'm going to take my two pieces and put them right sides together. So lining up, I'm gonna to try to line up my top first and then kind of press everything else in place. Hopefully it all lines up. Might be a little bit off. You might have to do some trimming at the end, but that's okay. Don't stress too much if it's not exactly perfect. You just want it as close as you can get it. Okay. Now we're going to flip it over so that it is, again, the top is up this way. The snaps are at the bottom. We're going to flip it over so that it is lining side up. Okay, and then grabbing our completed card slot that we made earlier, you will need to top stitch along this edge and this edge. I did not do that earlier, so I'm going to do that now. And then what we're going to do after that, if yours is already top stitched, you're ready for this next step, but we are going to lay it down. And there is a measurement in the pattern for how far up from the bottom you are going to um, align this bottom edge here. So after you get that in the right spot, we're going to clip it all in place and then we are just about done. All right, so once that is measured, everything is clipped in place. There are measurements for where you need to mark this panel. So you're going to measure up from the bottom and then you're going to measure down from the top. So the lines will overlap. When you measure up from the bottom, it will be this top line. And then when you measure down from the top, it'll be the bottom line. And this will make sense in just a second. So how we're going to sew this together is we're going to sew along the top, coming down to that bottom line, across and up. And then after that, we're going to sew along the bottom, coming up to that line, across that line and then back down. So these lines are going to overlap. So your box here and then your box here, they will overlap. And then that closes the bottom and the sides and you will have that extra row of stitching overlapping each other just right here on these sides. 
Okay, so that is stitched all the way around. I went around the top, down to this bottom line and up, and then another box at the top line, all the way around the bottom. Again, these pieces right here overlap, and that's exactly what you want. Okay, so now the last thing to do is I'm just going to do a couple little, let's see if I can find where my threads started and stopped. I'm just going to do a couple little singes just to kind of seal the ends of those threads. I'm trying to be careful I'm not holding it too long on the cork because I definitely don't want to burn the cork. <laughs> okay, so now as you can see, I have a little bit of overhang. It's not exactly even. So the last step, if you have that and if you want to, is you can um, just trim off the overhang. I think I just about have it. It's not perfect, but I'm not perfect either. So this is going to be what it is. And it's okay, right? We don't have to be perfect. All right. So the last step that I will do then is with my lighter. I'm going to go around and singe the ends, just sealing, kind of sealing the sides there and getting rid of any little fuzzies that might be there from when I trimmed the cork. So I do this rather quickly because I don't want to burn the cork. If you hold it on too long, you get like little singe marks. It's not very easy to get that out of the cork if you can get it out at all. Okay, I'm just gonna go quickly along the other side. All right, and then the last thing, if you want to, is always you have the option to edge paint. So when you're working with raw edge materials, like cork or vinyl, you can edge paint this flat edge. And a lot of times I will do that just because I, I think it gives it a really nice professional finished look. Um, also, if my edges aren't exactly perfect and even, if I can use that paint, sometimes I can fill that in and smooth it out and you would never know. So that's, it's kind of, for me, it's also a way where I can hide mistakes <laughs> or, or pieces that aren't exactly perfect. So when someone looks at it, they're like, well, how'd you do that? It's so good. Um, well, you know, I have little tricks up my sleeve <laughs> that hopefully they work. Okay, so now the last thing we need to do is just install the other side of the snaps here and I'm going to let's see where did I put it oh it's right next to me <laughs> good thing it wasn't a snake all right so I'm going to pull punch these again okay and then I'm going to take my snaps the other half of my snaps the outer piece it's going to go through this way and I don't need to use any extra stabilizer or interfacing inside because it, we already added that when we did it on the lining. Then I'll put this piece on, I'll set that and then I'll be back to show you guys the finished product. All right, so here it is, the finished wallet. Let me grab a card. Fingers crossed they fit and they do. Everything looks great. Let me try this side. Yep. Those fit as well. And then on this side, same. Everything fits. And then I have a pocket here, a pocket here. I'll snap this thing closed. And then on the back, you have the zip pocket. All right, there we go. I think I'm gonna edge paint this and then I will post 
um, photos of the finished wallet with the edge paint. Look for that in my group probably if I can get it done before. Um, you know, in the next couple of days, I will add it to this video. But if you don't see it at the end of this video, then um, just take a look for it in my group and I will post all the links for um, all of my socials in the description of this video so that you can find me easily. And again, I wanted to just thank you all. Thanks to Nicole from Sonar for allowing us to use her pattern uh, for this tutorial. This has been super fun. I hope you liked my modified version on how you can create this wallet with four card slots instead of 16 if you don't need the 16. And again, thank you so much for watching this video tutorial and for supporting the Marathon Society and all of the other amazing makers and sewists who are participating in the marathons. Please make sure you check them out. Follow the Marathon Society socials. We have a link tree. And again, I'll link all of that in the description of this video so that you can follow the schedules for the day and find out what our next um, sewing marathon is going to be. If you're finding this video through my channel on YouTube, you will notice that there is a Marathon Society playlist where all of the videos that we've made throughout the whole Marathon Society series is listed, um, all of the ones that I've participated in. So if you wanted to catch any of those, you can do that as well. And I guess that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Again, if you like what I do, please like, subscribe, uh, share with your friends, and we'll see you next time. All right, guys, go sew something fun.